going to bring now uh, Anna Robbins from Tutu Taco. Anna, if you could go ahead and unmute yourself. Tutu Tutu Taco, uh, Anna Robbins was part of our cohort 12, the most current cohort. Uh, she was behind the founding of Coyo Taco, and now her newest concept is a Cali Mexican uh, restaurant, a fast casual restaurant called Tutu Taco. It's in North Bay Village. Anna has been um, doing really uh, well. Uh, with her takeout service. Um, they're doing curbside takeout in boxes that are actually coronavirus safe. And one of my favorite things is I saw on her social media, you're delivering margaritas, something they weren't allowed to do before. Um, and they have a margarita bar. Uh, and trust me, I think a lot of people are taking advantage of that. So um, uh, Anna, uh, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. No problem. So talk to us a little bit about the new products and services that you're offering to your uh, customers around takeout and delivery uh, to help meet the demand for uh, your you know, Mexican food. Well, basically we had to switch everything over to takeout and delivery. Um, we decided to do an extra level of packaging. Those are the cardboard boxes you're seeing. Before we used to just use them for catering and big, bigger orders. Now every order that's placed uh, in-house, whether it's through the phone or whether someone comes in, comes in a box, is sealed within a box, and then we put it inside the cardboard box and tape it up so that people are feeling secure that, that, their, that their food is safe. Um, we had to switch to all um, to takeout and delivery and kind of change up our menu a little bit. So items that don't travel as well, we took off. We made a more consolidated menu to take pressure off the kitchen because right now we can only work with one cook at a time because of labor. Uh, issues and we are still in the process of putting together a new menu with all of our larger offerings with big boxes big family style which we were doing in the past but we weren't promoting as much where you can order a box with a pound of chicken and a dozen tortillas and all your sides and kind of build everything at home also working on combo boxes that will begin rolling out so we can have a special of the week where you get maybe a quesadillas guac and chips and some rice and beans trying to make it fun and of course very visual we've been doing photo shoots and shooting videos and trying to get we're getting ready to launch all of our online campaigns and then we'll start running digital ads for all of that and also needing to launch online ordering so all of these things are kind of in the works was hoping they'd be done by today but it's kind of a lot when you have to change everything overnight so once the online ordering is set up we'll run the ads where when people see it, they'll be targeted to our local community they'll be able to click go straight to our website and from there order um, their boxes for either takeout and delivery and trying to do all this to steer them away from ordering with uber eats and postmates while we love our delivery partners they do take 30 percent so right now is not the the time for that so it's also educating um our clients through messaging that in the most PC way to sway them to order directly in house and not order through uh, the delivery partner. You know, that, that's actually a really good point because it brings up uh, something that Marcelo Salop asked, which is how is this impacting your margins? So you're selling the food. Oh, you, you broke up for a sec, can you repeat? Oh, okay. um, how is this impacting your margins? You're selling the, the same, um, uh, you know, the, the same price for the food, but you have now um, the, the box that you need to deliver it in, sometimes Postmates to share the fee with. How, how is this uh, for your margins? So we, right now we're including a service charge that we were including um, for table service that was going mostly to the servers. Now the service charge is being included. Some of that is going back to the house to cover things like the extra packaging um, and just the expenses of staying open without having the dining room open. I mean, this is, we're only on the second week, so accountants still in the process of, of analyzing all of that. Yeah. It's going to, do you expect the margins to be lower or with the fee, you're going to basically make the same amount per order? I think, that they, I think the fee will, will offset it. Right. How much is the okay. fee? per order fee or is it based on is like a percentage of the price it's a percentage of the price yeah it's 18 percent. some of that goes towards the server or towards the team whoever's working that day and some because some people come in and they don't uh, leave a tip when they get a takeout order uh, yeah. and they're not realizing right now that my staff that is actually coming to work and you know taking that risk being out in the public when they are coming to work that they deserve you know to get tipped like they're 
their hourly is only a, is a minimum wage tip to employee hourly at 550. So if people, if people don't leave a tip for them, then they're really not making anything Then I have to subsidize that again, that's hitting the margins. So the service charge is also ensuring that the staff is being taken care of and there, I haven't had any complaints. I mean, I'm, I'll, I'll take it off if a customer doesn't agree to it, but from what I'm seeing, they agree and then they also tip extra. They're very grateful that we're open, that we're there feeding them, that we have um, stepped up our packaging. They love the boxes, they, they feel secure with it. So I haven't had any pushback there. And if anything, people are trying to support, they'll come and they'll order a shot of tequila or a margarita while they're waiting for their, for their box. We're also now selling the margaritas by the liter. Uh, the margaritas we have set up in a draft machine. So they come and they'll take a liter home, put it in the fridge and... That's awesome. You know, Bay Harbor Islands, where you're based, has been supportive of you. North Bay um, Village. I'm sorry, North Bay Village, sorry. North yeah. Bay Village, where you're based, um, is, has been very supportive of you. Could you talk a little bit about how the local town is, is being helpful and, um, in, in terms, because you're obviously going to be servicing for takeout and pickup uh, the local community. Exactly. I mean, from the beginning, the first day when we got the announcement that we had to close the dining room, the mayor showed up to order food for his family. And I actually mentioned to him that we, he came two days before the whole shutdown happened and he said, yeah, I'll be in your commercial. So if you see the, the, the little clip that you had posted that you showed at the beginning, that's on Facebook and it's on Instagram in the first clip, uh, the second, the second uh, scene of bringing food out to an SUV, that's actually the mayor of North Bay village, uh, Brett Latham, who's been very, very supportive. Uh, oh, that's great. Yeah. So he's going to be reposting it. Um, all of North Bay Village has. We have a Facebook group for North you Bay Village residents. So, so there's a Facebook group. Um, the town hall and the mayor are supportive of you. You had also mentioned that are they making available to you email addresses as well? Yes, they are. They they told me that. Well, they. I mean, this was even before this epidemic. They said that that it was just public information. If I want the email addresses of all the residents of North Bay Village, so I'll be, I'll be getting that so that we can start targeting that. Yeah. That, that's, you know, the, the point here sometimes is... Oh, you, you know, broke you, up again. You're frozen. No, no problem. Um, well, uh, well, we're going to move on just because we um, have a lot to cover. But um, Anna, stick around. Thank you very much.